What's that? It feels like Valencia might be the biggest distraction. He always is the biggest distraction of my week. You know, I, I could deal with my three kids easier than I could deal with him. He is a disaster. Was, was Bathor or Hickney made up on the spot? Or was that, that was on the spot, and he'll give me credit for that. I've never said that to him before, and I'm making, we make fun of each this other all day not, long. We came in here, I'm thinking I'm going to be nice. You want to stand next to me? You're, like, killing the show right now, Fat Thor. Come here. I'm going to be him for Halloween. I'm Fat Thor for Halloween for sure. Um, yeah, so, yeah, no, he's a huge distraction. Was that the question still? Okay, yeah. The day before weigh-ins, uh, a little bit different than the last few cuts that you've had uh, on weigh-ins Eve. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I always look forward to my weight cuts just because if you don't look forward to it, then you're hoping it doesn't come and it's, it's only worse. So um, I was always positive about it, but now that I'm not cutting weight, I'm like, holy smokes, I was killing myself all those years, you know. Um, I just feel so much better this week for all camp, you know, just keeping my body healthy. And that was the main point of me going up was, you know, I just want to be healthy. I, I've, I've been fighting injuries my whole career, and I think a lot of that was because I was cutting a lot of weight, depleting my body of what it needs. And um, so to be na at my natural weight, I've never felt better throughout camp. And then also fight week, it's like, wow. I, I mean, not to be focused so much on how much I weigh every single day and how much weight I got to lose um, and just kind of enjoy the process, deal with Fat Thor. It's just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cool experience. Chris, why do you think it's so hard for fighters to get to that realization, you know, that I'd be better off if I wasn't putting my body through this? Uh, I mean, you know, I think it's, I don't know if you're, I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. For me, it was just, it was just time. You know, I, I accomplished my goals at middleweight. You know, I became a multiple-time world champion, undefeated for a long time, and then I lost my belt. Then the goal was, all right, I guess I want to win that belt back, defend the belt as many times again. But that goal kind of became, like, stagnant and not – I wasn't super excited about it because it was something I already accomplished. So I was just going to, like, let me accomplish it again. But to go up to light heavyweight now, it just gives me a whole, like – I feel like I'm rejuvenated mentally as far as my goal setting, which I think was a big part for me. Uh, for me, my goal was always to be, like early in my career, my goal was to be the world champion at middleweight. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my goal was to beat Anderson Silva and, and, and beat him again in a rematch. That was really, like, where I seen it going. That's, I would rush to that point, and all of a sudden it happened. And I'm like, all right, now they're setting me up with Leo Machida. Then you got Vitor Belfort and then Luke Rockle. Then I lose my belt. I'm like, all right, I guess I got I to want to win this back and then do it again. And I felt like I was going through the motions a little bit. Um, and I realized that really when I decided to go up. And it was not because of the realization that I wanted to shift my goals. It was because of injuries and stuff. And now that I'm here, I'm realizing, like, wow, I feel like I'm back to where I was started as far as my mindset um, and what I want to accomplish. I just, I just feel, I feel so much more set on what I'm doing. We spoke to Donald Reyes. I asked him what was the biggest area where you imposed a threat to him. He said wrestling. One, do you agree with that and then flip it? Where do you think he imposes the biggest threat to you? Yeah, I'm going to say my wrestling and jujitsu are probably the biggest threat for him. Um, and then also just the, the well-rounded, the, the fact that I'm a well-rounded mixed martial artist. Like, you know, he's a good striker. You know, that's what he probably brings. That's the most dangerous. Um, you know, I think I fought better strikers. He's bigger, bigger than most of the guys I fought. But as far as precision and dangerous strikers, I think I fought more dangerous guys. Um, but I think the fact that he has to worry about the takedowns and that jujitsu because that could be the end of the night for him um, will change the, the stand up as well. So I think me just being in the cage with him and having him have to deal with all that multitasking is really the, the game changer. He hasn't had to deal with that. Sorry. He hasn't really had to deal with that in any of his fights. He hasn't really fought a guy who is well rounded or has really great wrestling. Um, you know, he got taken down three or four times from Bolkan Ozdemir, who had one or two takedowns in his entire UFC career before that. Um, he did a good job getting back to his feet. But again, it's not somebody who's going to be as persistent and have the pressure like I, I bring. Uh, and yeah, I'm, we'll see. You spoke a lot about John Jones saying one of the biggest motivations going up is to be the guy to defeat John Jones. <coughs> Two part question. A lot of people view John Jones as the greatest fighter of all time. Do you agree with that? Second part, where do you think you stand in the all-time GOAT rankings? Um, so, yeah, going up to light heavyweight, um, one of the main reasons I'm excited is definitely because there's a guy there that people think can't be beat and uh, people consider one of the greatest of all times, if not the, the greatest of all time. Um, and that's what it really excited me when I was down at middleweight. 
So to have the opportunity to, to, to not just shock the world once, but also twice in my career and beat two of the guys that people think are the GOATs, uh, that's the legacy I think I want to leave behind. Um, and as far as him being the GOAT, I think, um, I think if you look at his record and who he's beaten and how he's done it, yeah, he's the GOAT. But then you look and you put the drug testing stuff out there. And I'm not, and I'll, I'll be honest, like I'm just kind of like a casual fan when it came to everything that he did and failed. I didn't like read into it like crazy and know really everything behind it, you know, the picograms and all that crap. I didn't, I haven't like investigated it 100%, but at the end of the day, he's failed multiple drug tests. And um, I think anytime that you do that, it puts an asterisk on your whole career. And you have to, you have to say that. And, and same thing with Anderson Silva, you know, he's failed drug tests too. And for performance enhancers, and I think that that you have to put a question on the rest of their career. It's just like baseball. Besides, this is way more of a devastating sport. You know, we're not just hitting balls over the fence. You know, we're trying to take each other out. So, anytime a guy fails a drug test, you gotta, you gotta, you know, that's a serious thing. Do you think John Jones is a tougher puzzle to crack than your Anderson fights? Uh, uh you know what? Yes and no. At the time, so if you look at Anderson Silva now and versus John Jones, yes. But at the time, Anderson Silva had such a mystique and aura about him that was actually greater than John Jones. Uh, he was dominating everybody, buddy, you know, putting his hands down, playing with them. John Jones isn't doing that. You know, he's he's got he had two tough fights in his last last two outings and against guys who were middleweights. Um, you know, two tough guys, but he didn't look unbeatable in those fights. Um, Anderson Silva was he had like that invincibility feel to him when I fought him. Um, but as far as skill set, it's it's a it's a very interesting puzzle. Yeah, it, I think it's more, yeah, it's more of an interesting puzzle as far as skill set, but not maybe as much as a puzzle when it comes to mindset right. and like keeping mental focus, you know, like not letting the moment get to you and all that. Do you think a win over Reyes means John Jones is next for you? You know, I think um, there's definitely a good possibility for that for sure. You know, I mean, given my credentials at, at middleweight, you know, being a multiple time world champion and then coming up in weight, going against a guy who's undefeated at light heavyweight, ranked number four, if I go out there and make a statement and and dominate him, um, because, you know, the other guys in the top five, for, you know, from what I, you know, not that I, I'm not good at, I don't look at the rankings and stuff, but from what I'm being told, I think most of those guys already fought John Jones and lost to him. And if I take out the number four guy, um, yeah. And, and then you look at the skill sets and you put them on paper and I think I am a, a bad matchup for him if there is any for John Jones. Um, I heard, oh, sorry, that's it. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. I heard you got revenge last night on Volante with that match. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm not retweeting your Twitter, okay? <laughs> I, lost, I, I told you I'm not retweeting your tweet. Don't go to James Lynch's Twitter. See, I just hooked you up. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. I know, I there you go. That. I hope no one's watching. What happened in that game, though? I mean, it was really a beating. Yeah, shut up, bro. I hate you. <laughs> Seriously, you're never welcome back. Jim, Jim Walter, my manager, invited him to watch me and Volante play Madden. And literally, Volante never beats me in Madden. That's my game. But I haven't been playing that much, you know. Uh, and we're playing on Xbox. I'm used to PS4. And all right, he got one, he got one on me. And uh, the cameras were there. And yeah, I had a meltdown. I had a freaking meltdown. I hate losing. And I hate, especially to him. He sucks. He's so terrible. He runs... He runs one play on defense and three plays on offense. He sucks. But I, I lost. He had a good game. You know, what can I say? Um, you know, it's a game. You know, it's a video game. Sometimes the computer, you know, messes you up. You got your and, revenge, though. Is, is that the most yeah. devastating loss of your career? <sighs> Bro, I'm freaking devastated. You, you guys, are, I don't even like talk. I'd rather talk about all my losses one by one right now in fighting <laughs> than talk about this. Seriously, I'm like, I started sweating. I'm done. But you beat him the game after, right? Yeah, I did. I dominated him the game after. What was the score? Like, we need some insight. I don't remember. 14 to 2. <laughs> he got a safety. <laughs> when we talked to Dominic Reyes yesterday, and uh, he was talking about your weaknesses, that he's, the weaknesses he saw in you, he said that you've taken a lot of damage and you've been getting knocked out. And he also said he wasn't sure moving up in weight would be good in that department. What's your response to that? Um, so if he's questioning my chin, um, I think... If you look at all my fights, it's not like I'm getting, you know, sat down with jabs or anything like that. I'm not like getting wobbly legged or anything like that. Um, if you look at the two fights where I got hit with big shots, it's really the um, it's the Yo Romero fight and the and the um, Jacare fight. And I think in both those cases, it was technical issues that I made. 
and uh, Yo Romero, I, I shot to the wrong side. He was coming off the stool super late in the third round. He looked exhausted. I'm like, all right, listen, one takedown on him is over. I shot my head to the wrong side. He came over with a beautiful knee, and boom. I mean, that's a knee that probably knocked out anybody. I didn't go out. I was still moving, holding on to things, trying to go. But, um, you know, I think that's, I don't think that's a, anything with my chin. And then uh, my Jacare fight, that's a fight. He actually hit me with some things in that fight and no issues at all throughout the whole fight. Um, and then third round, I mean, I'm winning. And um, he's trying to circle me down. I'm circling out and I'm like, you know, I'm stopping, going to throw a big right hand. He throws his right hand. And I didn't slip my head out enough. And he connected on a huge shot. And I think it's another sh huge shot that probably would have put down anybody. So it's not, like I'm, it's not like I'm getting hit with these little clips and, you know, you see me wobbly. Um, yeah. Chris, when you're winning, you know how it is. Everyone loves you. Everyone thinks you're the best thing in the world. You start losing, no one's around. No one's, you know, when you start doubting you, you, you've obviously shocked the world before. What would you say to your doubters now? Doubters, just make sure you watch on Friday night. I'm super excited to be like, eh, what's up now? Um, yeah, I just, um, the doubter, I love having my back against the wall. I love having doubters, to be honest, because I just love to be like, hey, look, you're wrong. You know, I don't like, I don't want, I'm not cursing, but in my mind, I get like a little, get a little pissed off, like, what's up? But, uh, yeah, I, I like it. Backstage at UFC, uh, I mean, it was 238, you were a guest fighter. You seem a little superstitious about fighting in New York. <laughs> Is that still the case? I just told them, I, listen, I knew there was going to be a New York card in November. I'm like, I want to fight in October. I'm ready to go. You know, I, I, I listen, I, my last fight was in, in November, and I, I was itching to get back in there right away, to be honest, after that fight. I felt great in that fight. You know, it's not like I uh, had a terrible fight. Maybe strategy-wise, especially after watching Jake, uh, Jack Hermanson fight him, maybe I should have used my wrestling and jiu-jitsu more. Um, but I felt so comfortable standing with him, I felt like I was picking him apart to where I didn't really need to. Um, but... Uh, after the fight, I was itching to get back in, and then all of a sudden I had injuries, you know, and I think a lot was to do with, like, me cutting all the, w the weight I cut and trying to stay super disciplined with food. Um, I think it was just too much. And so, uh, yeah, to be back at a normal weight, and I just want to I just want to get back in there. I'm, I'm healthy and ready to go. So I didn't want to wait till November. And, I, and listen, t I was all about <laughs> like Madison Square Garden hasn't been the greatest. It's crazy. I mean, both Yo Romero and Jockery, I'm winning both fights, and, I'm in that third round, looking good, and uh, kaboom, uh, in front of a home crowd. I mean, it's a freaking nightmare. Uh, so I'm, I'm just looking for. I just wanted to get out of that a little bit, get on a plane and fly somewhere, and uh, kind of get back to what I was used to doing when I was fighting. You know, not, you know, yeah. Sounds like a superstitious, but I mean, Boston's kind of the opposite of New York. Do you feel like you'll have your best performance here because it is the opposite? Yeah, that's the goal. You know, absolutely, man. I want to. I want to look. You know, Weidman 2.0 this fight. That's what I that's what I, I wanted to to look like in there, and um, I think a change of scenery I think is a good one. And to go to Boston, who where like New Yorkers don't go to Boston, Boston guys don't go to New York. It's just kind of like you forget that it's actually three and a half hour away, three and a half hour drive. Like I never went to Boston, never even cared about going to Boston. And then when I became a fighter, I came out here for a Reebok thing, and I'm like, holy crap, this is like this is close, and it's really a cool city. It's awesome, people are cool. Um, and uh, yeah. So no frosty reception from Boston fans. I don't know. We'll see. I think I don't know. I'm an East Coast guy, you know. I think you know. I'm not a Yankees fan. Sure. You know, I'm a Mets guy. Every time I, I'm a, and I'm an Islander guy. I'm not a Ranger guy. Uh, we'll see. You know, guy? I'm more of a Jets guy. That's kind of the way it goes. But I'll, listen, I'm a front runner too. If 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 the Yankees, <laughs> if the Giants, if the Ra uh, Rangers, I'll never root for. That's, that's where I draw the line. But Yankees and the Giants, whoever's doing better in New York, I usually just jump in. The Bills are never doing that good, so I don't jump, really jump on them. But, yeah, for the most why, part, why I'll do Why do you like the Rangers? Because I, kinda, I grew up an Islander fan. That was like the one sport we kind of watched in my house. Um, I loved hockey growing up. And uh, so I started with the Islanders. And that was my team. I loved them. And then uh, I remember we were getting fights in elementary school. Like if a kid wore a Rangers jersey, you know, it's like, yo, <laughs> like there was, there was serious beef. You know, I didn't hang out with Rangers fans, you know, and I, they didn't hang out with their fans. It was kind of like there was a separation there. Um, yeah, but Yankees and Mets, I never really cared that much, to be honest. I know Wonderboy Thompson trained with you for this camp, as he usually does. How long did he spend with you for this camp? Because he has this fight coming up in New York. Yeah, he was just out, uh, he was just out 
a week ago, not not for long. I mean, five days or something. It was good. It was, I think for, just for the both of us, like it's a comfort zone thing. We've been training with each other for a while. He's been really busy. He's got a they got a new school. They just opened up sixth school out in out in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and uh, so he's pretty busy helping out with that. So he couldn't really come out for too long. But just, I mean, it's not like he's Dominic Reyes at all. You know, it's kind of like. Just kind of a comfort zone thing. Good training partner. Uh, was just a good dude to have around. You mentioned you're a big Good Will Hunting fan. You're oh in yeah. Boston. Yeah. Can't you tell uh, the boss, hey, how will we get Matt Damon, Ben Affleck in the audience? Yo, Dana, get Ben Affleck and Matt Damon in the, in, in the building. Let's go. Um, yeah, I love that movie, man. Yeah, how about them apples? Yeah, I love that. That movie's freaking awesome because I'm kind of like Good Will Hunting. In my mind, you know, like I'm super smart. So, yeah. But you just, I just, I'm acting like a blue collar guy, but I'm really like just super smart. You won't know it though. <laughs> I think that's good. Uh, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. All right. Thank you, guys.